This is DJ745 for Whirla Reggae, live and direct here in Jamaica. As part of our reggae history reasonings, we're sitting beside a really legendary artist who is not only a singer, a prolific songwriter, but he's also a DJ as well. Right here in Emancipation Park, I'd like to give a warm welcome to Mr. George Nooks. Blessings and greetings, my brother. Yeah, my, um, a pleasure to be on getting this interview and, and I'm big up all the people that's watching right now and, and you know what I mean? So we're ready to go into history and future and such for it, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I think for World of Reggae, the reason why the history is so important is because we want to create an archive for the younger generations. Maybe the people that are just, maybe not even old enough to listen to reggae music right now, your future fans, I'm going to call them, they need to know the background as well to George Nooks. But right now, there's a really big thing happening with your latest album, For You, which was released in the summer of 2018. Yes, and um, I love his rock album, and I'm telling you, it's, it, um, it's doing very, very, very well. And um, I appreciate how um, the fans have came out and, and just taking it up, taking it all, you know? Plus the new ones, the people that really love the authentic reggae. You understand? Mm -hmm. I listen to some nice music and just relax whether you want dance or nod your head or such for it. It's right there in the album, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah man, yeah. for real. And um, as I said, all over the place it's doing well. And, and for those who um, have not yet got that uh, copy of that, you better go get it. Because um, I spend a whole lot of time, energy, and heart and soul is in this one. It's been a while since I've released a Lover's Rock album. Right. So um, it comes right in time. Mm. Not too late and not too soon, just right, right. in time. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yes, so we're expecting um, it to even go further than, yeah. than, than, than it is right now. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. I'm enjoying the love that I'm getting from the DJs and, and, and um, all the radio people, the media out there. They're doing the right thing, just continue. Right, okay. Um, I mean, the album itself is, what, 16 tracks in total, and it's released on Tad's Records. Um, you've kind of been working with Tad's for quite a while, I feel. Yes. Um, we've been with them, after, let me see, give them about five, six albums now. Yeah, we've been with them for a while, and it's, it's, um, it's going well. What can I say? Mm. It could be better, but it's going well. So, you know what I mean? I give thanks for um, the outlet. And the platform that we get to, to um, let people hear stuff, you know what I mean? Some creases and corner that we wouldn't really get to if I was doing it on my own. So I'll uh, big up Tad still, you know? Right, okay. Yeah, okay. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, I think when we heard, I mean, I'm a radio disc jockey as well. So when we realized and heard that George Nooks has a new album with Tad's, it's kind of like the two names kind of go together. You know that there's going to be a quality product there, which it is. True word, true word. And I've said, I've spent a lot of time. The, the, um, the reason why this album is so, I would say good or excellent, is I did each and every track, I did them as a single. So um, I've never tried it before. This is the time I tried it and I'll continue to do this. When you do it that way, you expect to get a better finishing product. It's not like in, in the 70s, so or the 60s, so to speak, um, when you're putting out an album and all you have to do is get one or two songs and then you just fill it up. Fill it up, yeah. you know? And, and, and you yourself probably just listen to the album and know, say, you're going to skip that one. It's not like that, you know? Uh, um, it's all, all singles, so. Mm. Yeah, man, that's it. I mean, it's, I think it's a very well packaged together album. And as you said, that when you listen through to the tracks from 1 to 16, it kind of feels like there's not really any filler tracks because there's a song on there for everybody. Everybody. Yeah, man. Everybody. A song of yours. And um, you're a DJ and I know you play it and you listen to it. And coming from you, it's the same, um, it's the same that I get from all the people that listen to it all over. So... I'm getting that love back and I'm so appreciative and I continue to do what I do best, which is giving you music. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, of the of the 16 songs, you wrote quite a few of them yourself, right? Yes, I did. And um, um, as a matter of fact, this this album, so to speak, is is, is one of them that I've um, dig so much into and and get in my head. And you know, when you're too relaxed, you 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 um you're not too into what you're supposed to into. So you know, um, I've got into it and. I've come up with some beautiful, oh God, um, I know I did them, but I've been doing this for so long that I know when something's good, man, so what can I say? True, true, true. <laughs> I mean, some of the singles that have really been bubbling so far, you know, songs like For You. Yes. Love Light, what a song, what a song. What a song, what a song, what a song. Well, Love Light now is, is my, a good friend of mine, uh, my brother, Dennis Brown, yes. Um, but you know, For You. Um, the way I sit and, 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 and just get into my head and write that song. I tell you, boy, I mean, just the words coming together, it was such a joy. And the rhythm now just come lacking. And what can I say, man? You got to go get that album, man. <laughs> for real, for real, for real. Okay, so let, let's just go a little bit deeper now. So with this particular album, you've written 10 of the songs out of the 16. How does George Nooks write songs? Do you have to vibes onto a rhythm or do you just put pen to paper when you're maybe just calling out at home? How does it work? Yes, well, um, most of the songs that I write come to me at night. Um, and I'm having difficult sleeping. I, I just, that's where, my, that's where it put me to bed, you know? So, um, put me to sleep. So, I, I will um, catch a few lines and then I, I just nod off and jump off and write on something and then, you know what I mean? After that, I, 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 I go to pen and paper. And another way of doing this is I hear a rhythm and some lyrics just come to mind. Probably a few that fit the top of the rhythm and then I leave it for a little while and then I come back to it and then gradually, gradually I finish it. So that's how I, 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 I get my thing, you know? <laughs> you almost describe it like cooking something where you maybe put a little bit of seasoning leave it to brew for a little while and then come back to it most definitely yeah man so uh, it's good you don't just rush and just throw everything in the pot and then everything that you understand so yeah, yeah. yeah man um so words that would have just don't meet up to what you're you're expecting that take times i mean the couple of um days or whatever that you leave it those come right back more than when you just rush in to do something and just start with right now and search for it, you know. Mm. So, so um, that's how I do my thing. thing. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. for this album, you've kind of got like the the creme de la creme of musicians. Just give the viewers a little bit of an insight into just a few of the musicians that played a part on this project. Yeah, we have a, a whole bunch of musicians that that, that play. We, we have Sly and Robbie. We have um, um, a Bowie. One of my good friends, um, Carl, the Carl um, Bennett, and we have um, Kirk Bennett and Jumps, and we have um, China play a little bit of guitar. We have all them big musicians. Uh, um, I think, like, few musicians that I've spoken about so far. Some of them work on some track, then we have it's so much that I would have to be reading off a paper now for you to you understand. But 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 some of the top musicians they're definitely on this on this thing. That's why it sounds so real, real good, you know. Yeah, we, we, yeah. we we went and pick out who we what kind of sound we want and we just get it together and that's oh I, I mean, I big up all of the musicians them that's played on this track. Um it's eluding me right now because um but we get a good insight just from some of the names that you've mentioned yeah. um what i'm sort of feeling is that we have a, a mixture of some of the older veteran musicians alongside people like kirk Dove as well or kirk bennett as well kirk, yeah, yeah yeah yes yeah we have um fletcher the bsc okay we have um oh god um all of them all of them yeah right okay okay yes i mean one thing for sure is that whether you're singing reggae lovers rock or gospel your soothing tones are really still stimulating and it to me it shows your versatility as an artist oh uh, thank you my brother thank you and um i've get that compliments all the time you know and um it's god-given talent 
that I get. I, 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 I just give thanks for, for, um, for the platform again to just show people how, how it is. I mean, people come up to me literally and, and just want me to, for instance, I'm, I'm doing a show and I'm doing, a, you know, I have to do some lovers rock, then I have to do some of the DJs, and then I have to, t you know, I have to touch the gospel. And people will be like, coming up to me with, 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 with people in wheelchair asking me to touch them and it's just you know it, it oh god man it's like a musical healing yeah it is you know because um as, as far as i know they don't know of me as a preacher or a healer you know it's just my voice i know that touching them right, so okay. it, it, you know mm. and and at the other end i mean i see an old lady that can't even that just walking with her head down and get a glimpse of me and just stop somebody to call me because your voice is not strong enough and and to reach out and tell me that i'm doing great things for her it's just oh boy that that that, that just make everything worthy you know worthy. yeah, yeah. Yes, yes 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 you know now you just touched on something that i was going to ask you about because this is remember reggae history we're setting the foundations for the future generations a lot of people may not actually realize that you have a dj name as well let's talk a little bit about you as a dj yeah, well, um, how I came into the business was, um, you know, a, 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 a young, young, young boy. Um, I, I literally grew up in a church, you know. Uh, um, so I always listen to the radio. I hear a lot of, um, hear a lot of song talking about. I mean, we're talking about Bob Marley and Bob Handy and and the the the, the um, oh. Al Green, we're talking about, you know what I mean, all different kind of music that, he, that we, we, we listen in Jamaica here. And um, what I did was, after I leave church, and we, it'd be like a few miles from where the church, where I live, my school is. So, you know, walk back and forth, I have a little transistor radio, okay. and we listen to it when we're coming home, and even when we're going, and, and listen to those music, you Rai and such forth. It just, I just start vibes in. And I used to sing in the church, so it just come natural to me that I, I, this is what I was, I, w I will do in the end, which is no, not in the end, because it, there's no end for me now until there is. But I just know that this was what I, I was cut out for, you know? And so I usually sing in church and get like, and get the people, um, they, did, I did, they didn't want to stop. They didn't right, want me okay. to stop when, 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 I, when I sing, you know? So I will listen to the, and listen to all them songs and I usually sing them and my way I rem remember now I can't sing them in the church but I study them and I go and go on until um, I wanted to get in the music business now so I came down here to Kingston and Chance Lane where that, that was where everything was going on back then and um, I've met I see a, a few people I've tried singing for them and I mean, I guess they weren't the right people, but anyway, they start to have some talent shows in Kingston here, and I start to indulge in them. And every one of them that I go, I mash them up. Okay. You know, when you say mash them up, yeah, yeah. I work well, and people like me, you know. So um, it was there that I met Joe Gibbs. Right. Joe Gibbs, Errol Thompson, and, and, um, and they took me into the studio and took me, into, they heard me and say, oh, we have to have this kid. Take me to the studio, and they asked me, I think, there was a culture. Zion Gate right. Right. Was, was playing, and they said, I should DJ this one. Even before that, I did a couple of singing things for them, but I started to DJ, and there was um, the story about this dread that they said, farty, farty leg, leg, you know, which is some bugs, kill them. So my, 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 my version was, uh -uh. it wasn't like that. I was telling them that that, that, that was a madman. The fatty leg not kill him. So I, I counteract the song by saying, So no dread, no half, no fatty leg. Me say, if this time spread, pop, pop, gun, the pound the dread. Me say, if this time spread, the pop, pop, gun, the pound the dread. And it just took off. Took off, right. Yeah. You know what I mean? One of my biggest hit up to date. And even, even before that came out, I, I, I was George Nooks. So I was expecting it, expecting to see my name as George Oaks and that. So um, I came out, I saw Prince Mohammed. So I went to Errol 
and joke it and say, you know, what's up? And and their their explanation was, you're too good. Have one person. We split me in two, okay. so that people think that you're two different persons. So. That's where that so name where came, came from. from. Yes. So really, yeah, yeah. it was Joe Gibbs and Errol Thompson that, that, that christened yeah, Prince yeah. Mohammed. Yes, right. most okay. definitely. Because um, if if you could re um go to history and go back, there was a lot of Prince, Prince Farai, Prince Hala, uh -huh. Prince all of that. So they just uh, your name is Prince Mohammed. I was I mean, okay. <laughs> I was sh I was shocked, but I had to live with it because there was the producer. I couldn't tell him no, you know. Yeah. And yeah. I felt good as they tell me that. People think you're two different persons, so I have two, you know what I mean? I want a lot of bet. People that, people that know me personally want a lot of bet, though, you know? I've, right. I've, 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 I've known saying that he's the same one, man, because um, I did Tribal War, which was a year after that, 1978, it got Song of the Year, and um, people was comparing it to one saying, no, no man, I know him name so, I know him name so. Right, okay. So, so it was a struggle there back then until things had come together. We have a, a few hits, a few great, great hits of um, Prince Mohammed. With Prince Mohammed, have an album out, have the same um, song, Forty Leg. Mm. And we have a couple of big songs with Dennis Brown talking about how can I leave. Bubble me a bubble, I'm in a signature. trouble. We have money, money in my pack, cool, cool runnings. We have um, this platinum song with me, J.C. Lodge. Um, someone, someone Loves You Only. One Time Daughter One. So we had some real, real yeah, bigots, you know, yeah, yeah. Of, of Prince Mohammed, you know. And I think back in the day then, um, the style of how we actually were presented with the music was kind of like in a disco mix. So you'd have like the vocalist, then, whether it's a Dennis Brown or Gregory or someone, and then it would go into the DJ. DJ. Yes, yes, yes. That was, that was the best time then back then because um as we all know that cds and such for take oh none you know what i mean so i mean and 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 to tell the truth that was when you could expect royalties you know mm -hmm. you know that just like oh a peep someone who hear that song song now off the radio and just you put, as you put it out it's gone everywhere you know and and you, you, you find people on the street selling your own CD and mm. you'll be like, you can't. <laughs> so, you know, back then, nobody can't go in, the, go in a, a factory, go press record. They're not going through that. You have to buy all them labels. You have to do this. You have stamper. to buy your stamper. You have to right. do all that. So, I mean, you know what I mean? It's a big chunk. They took out of this business. But, I mean, um, what can I say? I'm, I'm, I've seen vinyl coming back. They say coming back, but um, I don't know if it's in my lifetime, but I, 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 I was for vinyl, you know? Yeah, man, that way I could have earned a little, not a little more, but much more, mm -hmm. you know? You know, you know how much press and such for it. Now see these, it is what it is. So, so we got to live with it, you know? I'll give yeah. thanks, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, your first album was probably more than 40 years ago. You shared with General Echo. People, are you ready? Um, you also had albums with, I think, produced by Linville Thompson, yes. the African Roots. Absolutely. So you know, there's a, there's a real whole history here to George Nooks or Prince Mohammed. And we have Africa Standalone. Um, we have quite a few albums that 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 was finished. That was a finished product then, you know. And um, you had one for Techniques as well. Bubbling. Ah, bubbling, yeah. Right. So. We have things for G, but album for G, well, oh, GG, we have a, a lot of albums that came out back then. So um, the history is, it's been there, you know, mm. it's just for our music, our music, what do you call it now, to just go there and Enthusiast. research and yes, just go research and see what's happening what's because, happening? Um, yeah, man, it's been there. I've, I've been there and I'm, I'm happy to know that, you know what I mean? I, I am. Um, have a little history there. In other words, there's a tile somewhere for me with my name on it right there, you know? Mm -hmm. So we just give them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, vocally, um, your style is very, very close to the Crown Prince himself, Dennis Emmanuel. What was it like working with people like Dennis Emmanuel when you were the DJ, Prince Mohammed? Well, it was good because you know what? Even, um, um, I mean, a couple of things that I should have said from, from, from when I started. Dennis, um, 
Chinna Smith, Earl Smith, the guitarist, he was he was one of them that I when I when I moved to Kingston, I used to live in Duane Park and he used to be in New Haven, so he usually be on his um veranda rehearsing all the time, vibes in. So, you know what I mean? I get to start go down there and that's where I met him and um and Dennis used to come down there too. Okay. And a couple of the um singers, you know. Um so back then you know Dennis was Dennis and I met him and um I tried to sound like him man because he was such a cool brother and his voice is is like he is still one of the greatest singers to me so you know um while we were singing I would come in and give me a little line few lines and such forth so Chino took me to the studio and then Dennis Brown took me to the studio too so there was really all of them come one time but there was really first before even Joe Gibbs, you know? So we we'll just give thanks for a singer like him who have, 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 have pulled me in under his wing and um, it was good working with him. It, 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 I usually be with him, so it wasn't like, oh, look at this big singer, we are trembling, you know? We, we worked together, so it was, it was easy. Right, okay. It was easy, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, from the albums and the songs that we've just talked about or the DJ songs as Prince Mohammed, there was a break now and this is what I want to try and understand that why was there not so much musical output from you as a person now up until maybe the late 1990s, 96, 97? Yeah, well, um, I was living in UK for a little bit, a little bit. I went to um, the US, I was there for a little bit. Canada, I was moving from year to year a few years here a few years there so I, I i was still doing music but it didn't it didn't get nowhere in other words who i was doing i wasn't down here in jamaica and who i was doing music for they they they, they there was no big producers no no you know what i mean I, no foundation people so they just put out their thing here and there so no people and and back then you know it wasn't like the internet now you just blast up and everything so um quite a few things i put out but i mean a lot of people didn't hear about it until i get i got back in my thing down here and mm. just start uh, do it the way i should do it and 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 just flip back the coin coin right okay yeah so the, the, so the time you're talking about right now i believe is around the turn the millennium yes. 2000 2001 yes. there was this really big song yeah, really, really, big really really big song i should say really yeah, from, from Come on, from the late 90s come up, as I said, you know, mm. into, um, we had um, so much love, Remember, um, quite a few songs, quite a few songs, oh great the heart, um, no power on earth, uh, yeah. we will pick it up right away and, and um, no matter what the circumstances, um, ride out your storm, yeah, bridge, bridge over trouble water, God is standing by, I mean, ooh, I could go on and on, you know, so, mm. There was the, 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 the history again, you know, so... Um, okay, I need to ask you a personal question then. God is standing by. Remember, this is reggae history. We're trying to almost myth bust. And a lot of people say different reasons as to why did George Nook sing God is standing by. So, in your own words, what inspired you to write that song? Okay, well, as I said, church was where I um, origin from, you know. And my grandmother was a mother of the church. So I had to go to church Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, right through, you know. So um, my my mom left when I was early to go and make it better, you know, um, better for us. And so I grew up with her, and she was good. She was strict and everything. And um, what I'm we, was really, what I'm really saying is, I used to sing in the church, and she was so proud of me. But um, the older folks, like my grandmother back in them days they, they, they was bent there was like if you're in the church you're in the church so you cannot venture out and and be singing other that's why other things like other things like I, I didn't do nothing derogatory now nothing you know mm. I was trying to make a living but to her she didn't understand you know she's like gospel if you are singing gospel in a church you cannot sing other songs so um, she asked me, um, in, in the 2000s, she got real ill. Okay. 
and gravely and she she um she always she always been asking me when when are you gonna come back when are you do some gospel when are you gonna start singing back in a church and me I said grandma um um you know what I mean I'm earning a living and this is what helped me to to make you f you know what I mean can can enjoy other things and such for it you know what I mean she understand but she 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 still press on so um one day I went to her and she said she she was like I was ready. She was ready to go at any time. So she said to me, she all she, she couldn't her advice was like weak. So she pulled me down she pulled me down to her so I could hear her and say, When you're not gonna do something before I, I go out and I, I left up there a rural St. Andrew, not far, about forty five minutes to Kingston and I came and when I left there I came right down and went in the studio. Um that song God is standing by. I used to sing it when I was at concert, you know, uh, um school concert and I always get this big noise and such forth because I always try to sing like Al Green too. So I went straight in the studio and I um I laid the rhythm and I did the song and um I took it up there and I CD for her to hear and while I was on my way I got the call that she died. Okay. You know so that was where that gospel Flip back coin came up, came up right, you know, okay. and 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 as you can, as you can tell, our my fans out there can tell that that song, ooh, that song, man, that song. I cannot go nowhere and don't sing that song, mm -hmm. you know. It's almost like a tribute. Yes, God is standing by, and and you know, people always go wild over it because um, apparently, not apparently, they love my voice and they love how I sing it, and it's a great song, you know. I mean. The believers in God know that, I mean, sometimes it's rough and difficult sometimes, but what, you have to just hold back your tears and stuff, just tough up, you know? Mm. Yeah, man, just tough up and the more you break down, the, the, you understand, you have to just don't cry, just turn up and just hold it. Hold it. Right. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we've had countless albums from George Nooks for labels like VP Records, Jetstar. I'm thinking of like the compilations with people like Glenn Washington. You know, we could go on and on because your history is very, very deep. One of the questions that I wanted to ask you, and this is something I was thinking about. There's not many artists that have maybe sung over a rhythm and then DJed over it. So I'm thinking of things like Tribal War. Yes. You had the 40 Leg Dread. And then you've sung back Tribal War, of course, yes, as well. Yes. Um, the same thing with, I think, Zion Gates as well. Zion Gates, yes, yes, yes. As well. And I'm trying to think, are there any other Jamaican artists that have, yes. have, have got the accolade of singing and DJing a hit song over the same rhythm? Well, um, I can't think of it. If, if I you, can't either. If you, came up, if you come up with something, let me know. <laughs> this is the thing. I can't actually think of it. And I think to myself, how great is that, that you know, you've got two different vocal sort of styles or patterns that have managed to make a hit back then and now as well? No. Yeah. We just give thanks, man. What can I say? I just have to give thanks and just know, say, I, I, um, if there, if there will be some Guinness thing book, uh, I hope I'll be in there. <laughs> I think you're creating your own Guinness book. Oh, that's okay. so, that's so. I, 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 I got to shake your hand for that, man. Right, then, yeah. I mean, I shake your hand for that, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm I think nowadays, you know, we have so many things like awards and accolades, but really, you know what you're doing, you know whether it's a good thing, and the award has to come from yourself. Most definitely. So, what you say just now, um, it is what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am creating it, you know. And when I look back, as I said, I, I simultaneously I had tribal war, Jordan on a fighting leg, DJ and singer at the same time. at, at hit at the same time and, and, and I did it over and over again so I haven't seen nobody do it yet man nobody didn't do it yet and and ooh I, I'm, I give thanks I give thanks I, 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 you know um, um, hopefully when they see this interview they'll try to put this put those I those dot and those high and that those cross and that cheese man you know Put the piece of the jigsaw together, right? Most definitely, my brother. Most definitely, you know. And it gives me joy. I'm, 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 me, I'm, I'm a very humble, humble, humble person. So um, sometimes I'll even forget that I'm a, I'm a singer. I'm a good singer, a big singer, you know. But it, it brings me back 
exactly where I'm supposed to be, you know. I cannot deal with a hype thing, man. It's, it's too much for me, you know. Um, you come and you hype, and tomorrow you don't hear about you. So that is not me, but, I mean, different strokes for different folks, you know. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> well, look, you know, as I said earlier on, we're really excited about this new album for you, which is doing big things. Tell the viewers, are there any plans for any video releases? Yes, um, we're supposed to, um, as a matter of fact, it's late. We're supposed to have videos out for, for, for Love Light because that was the first um, track that released. We're going now for For You and we're working on that concept for the video and a couple more videos. You know, I mean, the album before that, which, which was a full gospel album, Ride Out Your Storm, um, we get it from the jump start, meaning a video was there ready to come out with the album. Okay. You know, but um, get a little buffle along the way, so it's there, it's coming. It's coming. It's, it's coming. coming, yes. Okay, it okay. will be there. It's will be there. And the album itself is available on, on all digital platforms, so whether it's Spotify, iTunes, and you also have a physical release as well, the CD. Yes, definitely. So we have them and it's ready and it's out. So we'd love for you to just go get that, go get that, 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 um, mm -hmm. go get that copy. As a matter of fact, um, one of my fans just, one of my fans just gave one to me right here. <laughs> and this is, this is, this is it. Yeah, man, this is it. For you. Yes, my latest. Um, I'm telling you, we're talking about give love a try. A chance of a lifetime. Someone special for you. Let's make love. Ooh. Let's make love of night long. I want to feel you in my heart. Until the sun comes up, let's make love. Ah. Big, big album. And I know that some of the viewers that maybe haven't checked it out yet are definitely going to do that after they've heard you singing live and direct here, a cappella style in Emancipation Park. For real. For real, 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 real. A message now to all the people that have supported the music of George Nooks and Prince Mohammed. Yeah, as I said, we're giving thanks for them. You've been so great. Yeah, uh, um, for those who are who were with me from back then until now, the new fans, the people who love authentic reggae, who love good voice, who love good singer, DJ too, I'm here and um, I'm waiting for you to just get on that wagon here. Yeah man, it's moving slow, I'll stop for you, let's get on, you know, and, and I say God, God bless all of you all, you know, and just big up on yourself and one love and I'm here for you <laughs> George Knox it's been a real pleasure talking to you and go down into memory lane as well understanding more about you as a person as well so we give thanks from World of Reggae as well for your time today one love yeah man and a pleasure you know World of Reggae when we say World of Reggae we mean World of Reggae of the whole universe of Reggae you understand so Ah, what can I say? One love and just big up on yourself. And what should I go out with? For you, I would do anything. Anything for you. Yeah. I'll happily do. World of reggae. World of reggae. World of reggae. For you. <laughs> Yeah. We give thanks for your time today. One love. My brother, thanks much for having me and bless up on yourself, yeah, man. It's all good. God is good and God is good all the time. <laughs>